In Creo Parametric, you can copy and paste special features in your model. One of the ways that you can do that is that the features will be fully dependent on the originals, on the source features, but with options to vary. There are a bunch of intricacies to this, so let's take a look. I'm going to copy and paste special a bunch of different features. I have a sketch, then an extrude, a couple of holes, a round, and then an annotation feature that contains two different annotation elements. We've got a note with some parameters and a surface finish. So to copy these, I can select the group in the model tree and then right mouse, click and hold. Here is the copy command. It is the standard Microsoft shortcut control C. You can also perform the command from the operations group on the model tab. Let's choose to copy these features. And then I will go to paste special. I can get to that from the operations group from the paste dropdown. It is also the keyboard shortcut control shift V. This opens up the paste special dialog box. Dependent copy is selected by default and it's got the option selected fully dependent with options to vary. The reason that that one is selected in a previous video, I changed a config.pro option. So that would be the default option instead of partially dependent dimensions and AE details only. To locate the new features in the model, I am going to use apply, move and rotate transformations to copies. It's by far the simplest way to get my copy created. So I will click the OK button and it's got the features highlighted. Let's just select an edge as a translation reference. Let me grab them, just drag them a short distance away. I want you to be able to see the features side by side fairly easily. And I'm happy, so I will hit the middle mouse button to complete the move operation. Let's take a look at what we ended up with in the model tree. We have the moved copy feature. That's a result of choosing to apply transformations. Then we have a group called copied local group. So this is a copied local group of the group called boss. Then I can expand the features and you'll notice that they are named a certain way. They have the word copied followed by the type of feature it is. And then the next subsequent number available for that type of feature. So for example, sketch two became copied sketch two, extrude two became copied extrude three and so on. All right. So now that we know what we ended up with, let's take a look at the things that make this kind of copy special. If you select any of these different copied features or the copy group, let me select this feature right here. We have from the right mouse button menu, a menu for copied feature and then varied items, break dependence and remove dependence. So these are choices that you only get with this fully dependent with options to vary. These are the different options to vary. And so let's start off by taking a look at varied items. And I'm going to start doing that with the extrude feature. I will select the, the extrude feature, right mouse, click and hold, and then go to copied feature, varied items. And this opens up the varied items dialog box. You'll notice that there are three different tabs, or excuse me, four different tabs on here, 3D notes, parameters, references, and dimensions. So these are all the different kinds of things that we can change from that extrude feature. It starts out on the dimensions tab, the plus sign is automatically selected. So we can pick any different dimensions for this feature that we want to change. And so I'm going to change the height dimension. I will select it. It lists the original value. And for the new value, let's make a big change that you can see. I'm going to enter in a value of 20. And that's all that I'm going to change for this feature. I will click, that's about all that I have to change for this feature. Although I can change the references. Let me click no, and I'm going to quit the reroute. And so I'm just going to change that one thing and click the OK button. And now it changed the depth of the extrude feature. And you can see that it is much different. Again, this is a dependent copy, but we've changed the height of the extrude. 
Let's say I want to change more things. Let's try changing the sketch so I can make it wider, longer, all sorts of different things. So I will select sketch three, right mouse click and hold, copied feature, varied items, and now it's highlighting a bunch of different things. Some of the dimensions are hard to see. Let me try to change this dimension that locates it from the side surface. And also there is a dimension for the width. I will select that one. And then there's another dimension over here. Let me try to get to it for the length of the feature. So I selected all three of those dimensions. I want to mention that I was not holding down the control key. You don't have to select or excuse me, hold down the control key when the varied items dialog box is open. But once again, we have our initial dimensions, the original values, and then we can type in new values. So let's say that I want this offset a distance of 50 from the side surface. And then for the width dimension, hey, I want it wider. Let's make it a width of 25. And then for the length dimension, this 30 dimension, which is kind of hard to see, it's kind of blocked by the model. Let's change that to a width of 40. Again, just want to make some big changes that you can see. So now I will click the OK button. Well, it ended up modifying the sketch, but it didn't change the underlying features. And that's because when you do this copy and paste special that's fully dependent, if we expand the copied feature, it's actually a copy of sketch two. There's not copied sketch three inside of here. So this is a little weird intricacy about this. And so this is one reason why if you're going to use copy and paste special with fully dependent and options to vary, you might want to use internal sketches. And so I'm actually going to get rid of this work that I've done so far. Let me select the moved copy one and I'm going to delete the whole thing. Okay, let's confirm that we want to delete it. Let me go back to extrude to the original extrude and I will edit definition from the mini toolbar and it automatically opens up the placement tab. Here it is using sketch two. I'm going to click the unlink button and we get a warning dialog box. This operation will break the association between this feature and its sketch. An internal sketch will be created using a copy of the sketch. Do you want to proceed? In this case, I will click OK. Yeah, there are many situations where it is definitely preferable to use an internal sketch. So let's hit the check mark. So now I've got extrude two. If I expand it, you can see section one. That's an indication of the internal sketch. And I'm going to delete this independent sketch because I'm no longer going to need it. I will click the OK button to delete it. And so now I've got one fewer feature in the features that I'm going to copy or rather in the group that I'm going to copy. So let me select the boss, right mouse click and hold, and I will choose copy. Let's go to paste special. Once again, I will apply move rotate transformations. OK, let's pick this edge as a motion reference and drag it out. Let's make it a value of 50 like before and hit the check mark. So this time I am going to expand the features and we just have the copied extrude three. When I right mouse click and then go to copied features, varied items. Well, now I've got all these different dimensions available to me. So let's select those same three dimensions, the 25, the 15, and then we get the 30. Let me zoom in a little bit. It might be a little easier to grab it. There we go. And so now let's change the values. Let's change this to 40. And let's change the width dimension to 25. And also the length dimension. Let's change that as well to 40. And so now when I click the OK button, hey, it's made it farther away from the side surface. And it has increased both the width and the length of the feature. So it is dramatically different than the original, but it is still a dependent copy just with some varied items. Be aware that you can always go back to the feature, right mouse click and hold and go to copied feature, 
varied items. And you can remove any of these varied items from the list if you no longer want it to be modified. But let me cancel out of that one. All right, so that's an indication of varied items. Let's take a look at another command from the pop-up list that you can use. And so now let's go to the round, the copied round. I will right mouse click and hold and then go to copied feature. And here we have break dependence and then remove dependence. First, we'll take a look at break dependence and break dependence, this is temporary. You can say that, hey, I don't want this feature to be dependent right now. I can make modifications to the feature, but then later on you can always reestablish dependence. So let's choose our break dependence. And so now it is no longer copied, round, whatever. It is just round two. And so let me select this round. And if you take a look in the mini toolbar, there is a modify dimensions command. If I right mouse click and hold on it, we have more commands. One command that you will not see from here is edit definition. So when we broke the dependence, we can change dimensions, but that's pretty much it. Let's choose edit dimensions. And I'm gonna change this radius from a value of two, come here, value of two to four. And so you can see, yeah, it definitely looks different over here. Let me click on the background of the screen to regenerate. So now we've temporarily broken the dependence and we have a different radius for the round. Let's take a look at removing dependence. So let's select the copied hole and I'll right mouse click and hold, copied feature. And here we'll remove dependence entirely. So when I do that, it says remove dependence will permanently break the link between the copied and original feature. So it gives you the chance to change your mind, but I'm going full steam ahead. Yes, I'm going to break that dependency. And once you break that, you can never reestablish it. If I click on hole five, we've got full access to edit definition and a bunch of other different commands. If I right mouse click on it, we no longer have a copied feature menu available here. And so let's say that I go to hole five and edit definition. And here from the shape tab, let's have this be through all where the others were a blind depth. And I'll just hit the middle mouse button to complete the feature. Let me rotate so you can look full down on the model. And so those other different holes are just a blind depth, but that one is a through all hole. Let's try uh, just take a look at the copied hole again and we'll right mouse click and copied feature and we will break dependence. Once again, I can right mouse click on this one and it is not going to give me the ability to edit definition, but let's restore the dependence. I will right mouse click and hold and choose restore dependence on this one. Again, really didn't make any visual difference to the model. Let's take a look at what happens if we restore dependence to the round where we change the radius. Right mouse click and hold, copied feature, restore dependence. By the way, you still have the option to remove dependence entirely, but we will restore. And let me just hit the regenerate button. Something happened a little weird where there's a brief failure or something, but if you regenerate, everything should be fine. And so there we have our copied round two again, instead of just being called round two. Okay, the last thing that we will take a look at for these features are those 3D annotations. And so here I have the copied annotation. Let me expand it. I've got my note and my surface finish. And so let's go to the copied annotation. Once again, I can right mouse click and hold. And from copied feature, we can go to varied items. And so there is the choice here for 3D notes. But if I try to grab this 3D note, well, it gives me this, it's in here. And so you can deselect it if you don't want it to be copied anymore. Uh, but that's about all that you can do from right there. Let's go to the surface finish option. And for the surface finish option, I can click on here. And so here we have the original value for the surface finish. Let's change this one to a value of 125 and hit the enter key. 
and now that is updated. But what I really want to do is I want to change these parameters here for the code and the tag. I don't want it to be D and 9. I want those to have different values. If I try to go to parameters, well, it's just got the roughness parameter in here. I can try the plus sign, but it's just basically giving me a parameter for the note text. What's more important is that it's saying that this is locked. I'm not able to change the note text from in here. So let me close out of that one and click the OK button. So I was able to update the surface finish. If I do want to update the parameters that appear in that note, well, the parameters actually belong to this local group. If I right mouse click and hold on it and try to, oops, yeah, here's copied feature and go to its varied items. Well, it's just got 3D notes and parameters. If I try to pick the different parameters in here, hit the plus sign, you know, it's just like, hey, where are those different parameters? I don't have them to select. So because of how this particular note and its parameters were created, I can go to the local group, right mouse click, copied feature, and I can break the dependence. Now it's just called local group. And since the dependence is broken, I can go to its parameters. And right now we have full access. Actually, let me let me show you. Let me restore that dependence and show you what would happen if I had not broken the dependence. Let me go to copied feature, restore dependence. If I right mouse click on this and go to parameters, well, here we have those two parameters, but they are locked, and the source is a fully dependent copied feature. So you know, before I break the dependence, I can't change these different parameters. So let's break the dependence, right mouse click and hold, copied feature, break dependence, and then I can right mouse click on it and go to parameters. Now I can modify them. Let's change this to a value of E. Let's change this one to a value of three and click the OK button. And so now you can see that that 3D annotation updated with the new values of the parameter that belong to the local group. So there you have it, a bunch of nuances about using copy and paste special with fully dependent with options to vary, mainly around the varied items, breaking dependence, removing dependence, and restoring the dependence.